Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Monster Girl Gameu. Monster Girl Gameu is about dating a bunch of monster girls in a Gameu format. This visual novel is currently only a demo, but it actually features quite a bit of content, so I won't be showing everything, but I'll be showing the main important highlight. Skeleton Girl. It was a dark and stormy... No. No, that's too cliché. You there. Do you have a moment? No. I'd like to tell you a story. It's about this guy. A guy named... Inoko. Named... Help me out here, would ya? What was his name? Some guy named Manly. Don't know who he is. Manly! That's that mediocre Let's Player I heard about. I mean, that was it, thank you! Narrator guy? Huh. Your name is Manly. That can't be right. I suppose you already know this one by heart. I do, because I've clicked through here before, as you can see by the green. But ignore that. You're gonna tell it even if I say yes. So, who cares? You're damn right I'm gonna tell it! I didn't fly all the way out here, to give up just because of some rip in the timeline. The least you could do is be polite. I'm disorientated as it is. I don't even know who you are. What am I doing here? Screw it. I don't need your pity. I'm moving on. This is the story of a boy. An incredibly rude boy named Manly. That sounds about right. You're on thin ice, lady. You're not exactly proving me wrong with your lovely attitude, kid. Keep it up and I won't tell the story at all. Well, that's alright, we can just end this here. You'd probably prefer it that way, wouldn't you? So would I, honestly. Well, too bad. I'm telling it. Most stories are about unlikely heroes, knights, or bland guys who manage to fall into a harem of overly affectionate girls. And occasionally Andere. However, this particular tale concerns a rude boy by the name of Manly, who's shilling this visual novel. Manly wasn't always a waste of space, mind you. When he was younger, he was a model kid. He always listened to his parents and followed the rules. He had dreams, a normal income, and didn't always just play video games. But when the clock stuck midnight on his 13th birthday, he transformed into a problem child. Puberty makes fools of us all in that way. He wouldn't put the toilet seat down. He corrected spelling mistakes in library books. He'd sass his teachers. Worst of all, he'd insult other people's tastes in fiction a woman. Oh my god. You don't insult other people's waifus. You gotta be polite, respectful. This kid's starting to sound pretty cool. Like he's me. You would say that, you dumbass. The kid is you. I don't know why I found that funny. Quick save. And for the record, fixing mistakes in a library book is not cool. If anything, you should have written a letter to the publishing company. Fixing the mistake in one book doesn't fix it in all the other books. It fixes it in my own mind. It's graffiti, and it's wrong. Now look what you've done. You made me lose my place. Where was I? The trouble only increased as he got older. Assassinating teachers turned into fighting them. Cool. Stolen toys became stolen cars. And stolen girlfriends. All at the same time. He literally stole the car with the girlfriend in it. Kidnapping. The kid went through schools like guys go through tissue paper. While it made him popular enough with his peers, his parents were at a loss. Some guys just use rags. Anyway. No school near them would even entertain the idea of letting him join. And without a proper education, he had no chance for a career. Not to mention, finding a nice girl to settle down with. They wanted grandchildren as much as anyone else, but not at the cost of him marrying some monster woman. After a year or two of searching, they finally locate a school, willing to take him off their hands. Unfortunately, it was in a city of undesirable races. And while he thought it was weird that his mom pointed it out, 
Yeah. It was weird that she pointed it out, or yeah, the fuck she even say that shit for? I guess I am a rebel. It was weird, right? Are you... So are you supposed to be future me? I kinda got lost here. You'd expect it from your dad, but not your mom. She never seemed like the type. Maybe there was a reason for it. But you could take it up with your therapist. Because I've got a story to finish, you crazy boy. He wasn't going to let that keep him from terrorizing a new group of teachers. How bad could it possibly be? Maybe he'd even get the chance to bang some foreign chicks. So two days ago, he packed up his things. He got on the first bus headed straight for that mi minority town? Legends would surely tell what he accomplished there. Chapter 1, Act 1. Is this humorous? The bus ride stopped abruptly around noon, leaving Manly stranded in a shop-filled alleyway that looked mysteriously like Japan. If he were paying attention to anything other than his phone, he might have noticed something was amiss. And if Manly was genre savvy, he would have brought a map instead of wandering around. No, that's not how it works. You bump into somebody. But he wasn't, and he didn't. He did, however, notice the cute redhead standing alone. He had a thing for redheads, ever since second grade when he ate his first red crayon. Nah, it's that bussy redhead from sixth grade? No, I think it's the red crayon. Or whatever. Or it might have been about a redhead in sixth grade, who did some unseemly things. Things which I frankly don't have time to go over. Did she feed me red crayons? He lost me. He figured if he had to get directions, it should at least be from a cute grill. So he made his way over to her and then... Took her hands in my hands. That's not weird, right? Grabbed her oddly cold hands and pulled. That was a standard pearl call in second grade, and Manly's furling style hadn't changed much. If Manly was genre savvy, he would have asked his parents to elaborate about that race remark. Maybe, just maybe, that would have prepared him for the shock of... These handouts. Skeleton's arm popping right off her sleeves. What kind of sick person carries around fake arms? Going back to the previous title of the chapter, I don't find this very humorous. They felt real enough, but they had to be props. The only other option was that she was some kind of... Some kind of... Skeleton grill. Impossible. Inconceivable. Implausible. Inconceivable? Skeleton girls were make-believe. Like Santa or fairies. Hey, wait a minute. I take it this ribs my main character the wrong way. Yeah. You know it. Torn between running and fighting her head on, Manly gripped the she skeleton's arms, unsure whether to use him as a club or toss him. As he waited for the sweet embrace of death, it turned to him and spoke. In a voice befitting a young woman, and all in all when he imagined a bone broad sound like. Please, to be returning my arms now, yes? It was more pleading than annoyed as if she expected him to run off with her arms at any moment. There was also a slight Brooklyn accent. Well, really, there is. He would have laughed if this were virtually any other situation. Well, too bad I can't do a Brooklyn accent. Wanting to keep his distance, Manly dropped the arms and slowly kicked them over. Would the undead dame be pleased? I mean, appeased. If he hadn't seen it with his own two eyes, he never would have believed living skeletons were possible. This is taking me a while for my character to process. You could say he's a... Bonehead. Nice rack, though. And by rack, I mean your ribs. I like ribs. They taste good. Quiet, you! Oh, wow. We get straight to the point here. <laughs> Fantasies of putting his dick between the skelly tits immediately ended when he remembered he was sexualizing a fucking skeleton. 
He was depraved. Not quite that depraved. Yes, I am. Right. Oh. It's more of a rubbing motion, I imagine. Instead of running for his life, he stood there, wondering how sex with a skeleton worked. Well, it actually was. You knew it, visual novel. Perhaps it was a defense mechanism to keep himself sane, in spite of the sight in front of him. <laughs> What's with that ridiculous get up? I was a go of the Skeletor voice, but I'll just read you normally. Because that voice gets annoying to me after a while. Penny Person's a name. Not being a skeleton is my game. Kinda normally. No, we'll just go back to Skeletor. As you can see, I am completely human like yourself. So there's no need to be alarmed. Is that not it? Oh, it's because I didn't insult your hair, right? That hairstyle of yours is really cool. Seriously, it's great. Your ribbon says Venus. Or Venice. No, yeah, Venice. It says Venice. What'd you say about my hair? I really loved Josuke. I knew that series had to be based on true story. No one can make up something that bizarre. Except for Jojo. I like how your your eye sockets, despite you being a skeleton, they seem to shift in the shapes. You know, like they should be solid, but you know, I won't question it. And he never ages, you know. So that had to mean the stone mask is real. Wow, two references in one go. How come you haven't adored, adored, adored me back to un, un life yet? I guess I wouldn't be able to see it even if you did. Huh. What could it be that you're the unnamed Pompadour owner that saved the little Josuke? I was actually a theory about that with the Rinse It manga. Jojo Land. But anyway. Can we start over? I'm Manly. And my name's Manly also. Manly? That's a great name. Like something straight out of an Eroge. Great hair. Huh? Great name. I'm really starting to feel out of place here. But I won't let that keep me from making a good first impression. Why does a skeleton have breasts? Are they pets? The name is Skelly. Something, something. This VN has nothing to do with Undertale. The creators addressed this many times. Don't make references to that in the comments. I'm telling you this right now. My hobbies include basement dwelling, watching terrible cinema, and praising unironically. Ironically. Unironically. Oh, and shit posting on for I mean chan sites. And thinking about it, this is the first time I've been outside in the last three years. No wonder your your bones are so white. I guess you can call it a debut of sorts. Pretty sure it's just image ports. What kind of last name is something? Eh, whatever. I see you've fallen from that clever ruse. Wow. My attempt to frustrate you. Are you frustrated? Had I wrinkled your jam jams? Memes. A lot of people think that shitposting is something that can only be done online, but that's not true. That's not true. Just like ice sculpting that can be an art, that shitposting too can become an art, and sort of eat me in space. Okay, I need to, like, look very closely at this. Because it's very small on my screen. <laughs> it might take a few years, but with that right and kind of shitpost, we'll be able to bring shitposts into a new Pacific Warfare time. Form. Confused by the never-ending string of words emerging from her mouth, Manly decided to take action. Seriously, who are you? Are you the narrator, or are you me? Desperately look for something to interrupt her. Or quickly... Well, this is what I picked before, apparently. Manly searched for his bag for something to explain his situation. A few phone numbers, an open bag of chips, a box of condoms which you won't be needing in this situation at all. 
It was beginning to look like he'd have to tell her himself. Well, there was that letter. Mahan made an academy. Manly couldn't imagine why he needed it, so he gave it to the undead dame. Maybe it was enough to keep her from asking follow-up questions. Mr. Manley's going to Mon Maiden Academy? Uh -huh. That place is real rinsy, but they only take bottom tier scum. Listen, I'm top tier. In my mind. It's a happy place. Sometimes. So it's kind of like, I mean, it's kind of like being, <laughs> oh well, eating <laughs> a super hot girl. Oh, wow. You know, I actually regret reading this now. <laughs> that was actually not a good sight. Um, but hey, <laughs> at least you want to be alone. <laughs> oh, Skelly's going there too. I probably should have said that before telling you it's for bottom tier scum. At least before the period remark. Well, I'm not gonna let that boner make me look like a fool. So, just show me your boner, and I'll put my name on it. Listen, there's no bone there. It's a, actually a spongy muscle, but anyway. I, I, I mean, show me your card. Uh, sh show me your card, and I, I'll put my name on it. Keep your boner in your pants. The e-card? My credit card? My credit card? No, I mean your ID. Your protection card. But explain this credit card to me. Uh, no one cares about that. No. It's something that you use when you want to go in debt. Or when you want to party. Mutually exclusive. Is it similar to a business card? Oh. Do you want to exchange business cards later? I picked mine up from the printer's ass today. It was a little expensive, but you can't have a business card. Without a watermark on the card. Apparently, I've clicked this before. I didn't actually read these choices. I just skipped through. But anyway, explain what a credit card is. I'm actually kind of curious what he's going to explain. So it's a card that you can charge things to, even if you don't have the money. Yes, that's exactly what I said earlier. That's clever. I should get one of those. Then I wouldn't have to beg father for cash. However, this isn't the protection ID. You really need one of those. You won't last longer than a few hours without one. I'm gonna do you a solid and help you get it, alright? Don't just stand there. Come in. Not taking no for an answer, Skelly pulled Manly to a nearby bookstore. First by his pants, then by his shirt, and finally by his belt. It was almost as if she was afraid to hold his hand. She clearly didn't understand that he wasn't as psyched about the situation as she was. The store was largely empty. Manly couldn't tell if it was related to the time or the fact that there were three other bookstores on the street. The tiny group there was split between humans and non-humans. Two normal human couples and one clerk. If it wasn't for the rest, you'd just assume it was a struggling, but normal bookstore. But the rest... A half-horse woman browsing the self-help section. A demon man who clearly wasn't watching his two unruly children, and... A woman made of rain clouds. How does that work? You just kinda, like, take multiple rain clouds, and you push them together. And then you shove them over there, and then... Rain cloud girl. I guess. You just, you just touch the fluff, and you just... that's all you can really do with it. Anyway. Manly tried as hard as not to stare. A few minutes later, she returned, munching on half of a muffin. Hey, is that one of those weather women? Tempestas? I think that's what they're called. I can't remember the last time I saw one in person. I heard if you throw a coin into the water and make a wish, it'll come true. Oh, the clerk girl said your card will be ready in a few minutes, so... You know. Look for a coin. Manly checked his pocket for coins, but only found a button. That's why I rely on credit cards, apparently. Well, buttons are kind of like coins, right? Manly was a star player in his little league ba baseball team. So landing a button inside of that girl would be no problem at all. 
but as he ready for his arms for a pitch, a bony hand wrapped itself around his wrist. The buttons aren't coins, friend. If you wanted to be a coin, all you had to do was just say so. Before Manly could utter an obscenity, she began reaching into her corpse cleavage. Why does a skeleton have cleavage? Suddenly, a roll of quarters emerging from her shirt like a handkerchief's in a magic trick. A roll of quarters. A piggy bank. A teddy piggy bank. You know where this is going. A teddy bank. Da -da 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 -da. A, reference. a roll of quarters, friend! And a roll of quarters, we can make a wish. So we can make a wish. Five dollars and quarters, you can make a five dollar wish. Or five dollars worth of wishes. There's ten dollars there. I'm growing impatient, friend. Please be throwing the coins now. At the behest of his corpse companion, Manly removed the coins from their cardboard container. Which is right around the time he noticed they were chocolate. Chocolate coins. You're as poor as me. But you're rich in sweetness. Not wanting to make this weirder than it already was, he shrugged and threw them at the rain cloud girl. <laughs> Surprisingly, despite years of slacking, Manly managed to land every single one of those coins to send the rain girl's water... slime... body. I have honestly no idea how those people work. So it's, it's a goo girl? No, then why is it made out of rain clouds? Oh. Holy fuck! You actually did it! So cool! Super cool. Humans are cool. Manly is the greatest cool. That's odd. It looks like she's coming over here. Probably to congratulate you on your throwing skills. What is that? An umbrella? Doesn't she know it's bad luck to open those indoors? Oh, it's a baseball bat. She's about to go GTA on us. Huh? We should run. Let's get a leg up on her. Run! Outside! Outside! This isn't a drill! Run! I use my normal voice to show that it's more dramatic. I think I'm clever.